All right, guys, and welcome back to the Peak District. I'm out for another camp, and today I'm with James Popsis. Solid pronunciation, perfect. <laughs> so James is an adventure photographer and YouTuber. So I think camping and photography, they cross over quite nicely. And this is a great location to partake in both pastimes. Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. If you need a website, head over to squarespace.com slash Paul Messner and you'll get a free trial and 10% off. So James is just getting pitched up. While he's doing that, I'll take you for a look around the joint. So James is making a video too, so He's going to be looking at comparing some of his gear to mine, taking a few photographs along the way. So I definitely recommend checking out that video. I'll pop a link up in the corner here. So James has already pitched up and part of today's video is really to, to compare some of the gear that James might use as a, as a photographer compared to what I'd use as just a regular wild camper. So as you can see from James's pack and he's got to fit a lot of camera gear in there. What do you say it was James? 70 litres? I think so, it's called an f-stop sucker that bag. Okay. 70 litres, packed to the brim. Yeah, he has a section here so he can get easy access to his camera gear. Quite like his tent though. This is one that I've recommended before, the Van Gogh Nevis 200. Very similar to the first tent that I used when I started camping. There's a bit of rain over there on Kinder. Suppose I'd better get pitched up as well. Rocking a new rucksack today. The Osprey Archie on 30. So James has managed to get everything in 70 litres. <laughs> to be fair, it's been tight, but I've squeezed it into a 30 litre pack today. So I'll give you a quick look around this backpack. So it's fully adjustable. It's much more heavy duty you know, than my Osprey Exos and some of my other lighter weight packs. But that does mean it's a little bit heavier. I think the pack weighs about 1.4 kilos. It's really robust and it's got things like metal buckles, you know, strengthened straps, etc. And it's one of the few Osprey packs that does come with a, a rain cover. So let's take a look inside. So this is one of my very favourite features of this pack. You can unzip it all the way down the length. So it's easy to get things at the top and at the bottom of your pack. Rocking the Terra Nova Photon 1 again today. I best get it up pretty sharpish because the rain's coming now. some lovely colours in the sky, look. I've got the tent pitch but nothing else is ready yet. We had to escape from the rain. Got the perfect shelter there under these rocks. I've even got myself a little seat but I better be careful not to bang my head. Looks like something from Raiders of the Lost Ark. Mm. 
All right. That'll do the job. Lovely. Sometimes you need three hands, don't you? <laughs> I bought the posh quilt today. The UGQ Bandit. I don't think I'm going to need this amount of insulation. But I thought I'd treat myself today. You know, this is my, my favourite sleeping item, if I'm honest with you. I just wish I'd brought it. Bought it. Um, at a a slightly uh, cooler rating, so something like down to minus six as opposed to minus 12. So that's me set up, quilt, Thermo S Neo Air X Lite, usual pillow. And this is our view for the night. Right, I better get a bit of dinner on the go. You're sick of seeing this, aren't you? From Pocket Rocket 2 today. Gone small, everything really, so I can get it into a 30 litre pack. I don't think I'm going to need the stand. That's why they call it a rocket. Tonight's takeaway is chicken curry. Not had one of these ones for ages. Really tasty. Found it straight away as well. Well done. So it looks like cat puke, but I can assure you it tastes awesome. A lovely evening. The wind's starting to pick up a little bit though. There's the bright lights of Sheffield. I thought we'd have the place to ourselves, but there's another couple of tents about. Not sure what that is. Some kind of teepee. A bit further down here, there's a fellow in a Hilleberg Acto. He popped over to say hello. So it's nice to meet him. Not sure there's enough light to pick that up. So we've got the tents lit up. A little bit of night photography. The iPhone's not in the same league as, you know, as a proper camera though. If you want to see some decent photos, go and have a look at James's video. It's been a grand evening. A stunning location. So this rock formations. It's awesome really. Tent's flapping a little bit but it's it's not too windy so hopefully we should have no issues tonight. And fingers crossed we get sunrise in the morning. A quick thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. So I originally chose Squarespace because I wanted a professional platform to share my ideas, photos and videos. It's so easy to use. I simply upload my images, video links and then some text and the Squarespace templates do all the rest. If I can create a website in an evening, anybody can. So having a Squarespace website has really helped me grow my YouTube channel. I now rank in search engines, 
and it's really helped me develop business partnerships in the outdoor industry. So if you need a professional website to help amplify your message, then why not head over to squarespace.com slash Paul Messner for a totally free trial and you'll get 10% off your first purchase. So good morning. This is the beautiful sunrise I was telling you about. It's like pea soup. Virtually zero visibility. Just about make it out of the yellow turn anyway. So the wind wasn't too bad last night. Had a reasonable sleep. Pretty pointless setting the alarm though. But I'm up now so we'll have a look around and then we'll get the kettle on. Yeah, if you're watching Joe, still prefer my technique. I thought it was you, Mia. Morning, you sleep all right? I don't sleep too badly, yeah. How about you? Very good, thank you. So for those of you that's interested in getting the Zenith 200, you can see you get loads of space in here. There's a decent sized vestibule for storing your gear. And there's one, oh there isn't, there isn't one at the other side, but there's two entrances though. Um, plenty of storage pockets, look. So James was rocking this sleeping pad last night. Says he was pretty comfortable. Just as noisy as my pad though. You can definitely tell that a photographer will use a different setup to someone like me. I'm here with tiny little action cameras and filming with the iPhone. And James is back in big lenses, although that's very minimalist tripod for, for a photographer. So James likes to not bother with tripods and stuff, do you? It's all handheld stuff. Quite, quite, especially when I can't fit everything in a. 17 inch bag as it is. <laughs> Got room for a tripod. Or nearly a camera to be honest. So there's a spot for some of the more hardcore people. <laughs> Get your sleeping bag and a bivy under there maybe. So this is where the fellow with the Hilleberg Acto was pitched up. Nice little spot. It's only quarter past six though, so he was up at the crack of dawn. Really nice sheltered spot out the wind, this one. These rocks are awesome. I wish I was a bit of a rock climber. Sound of silence. So I had a good night with the bandit quilt last night. I expected to be a little bit too warm, but as you can see, I opened it up, used it like a regular duvet, and you know, when I got a little bit warm, I just stuck a leg out, or just pulled the covers back a little bit. Can't believe how much this lofts up. Definitely worth checking out if you want a, a quilt that's custom made to your requirements. I went for the 850 down fill, and it's a uh, 10 degrees Fahrenheit which is about minus 12 degrees Celsius. Think this will fit into your bag, James? <laughs> Not quite. Did you say that will go really small? Yeah, I'm going to compress it down now somewhere.
So you can get compression sacks for them, but yeah. I'll just use a, you know, a dry sack for mine. Yeah. Just squash it down to that. It'll go a little bit smaller than that as well. But it weighs very little as well, so only yeah. about 800 grams, something like that. Okay. Yeah, of course you can. So it's starting to puff out again now, because that's yeah. what down does, it just fills up again. But you, when you squash it down into your bag... It'll squeeze into much tighter gaps than this. Yes. Yeah, so a tent, it's one of the things, we call them the big three. So like you use your tent, your rucksack, and your sleeping bag. Yeah. They're the things that you're supposed to start off with first with, with saving the weight. Yeah. So, however, you know, the tent that you've got there, you've had more comfort than me, because you've had more space. It's done exactly the same job. So it is, it's perfectly capable in these conditions for a fraction of the price. So if you're prepared to carry it, you can put up with a little bit of extra bulk. Yeah. I don't recommend spending loads and loads of money on a tent unless you're going to use it a lot. Mm. That's everything packed up as usual. No trace that we've been here. So finally we've dropped below all the clag. We're starting to get a few views again. almost back at the car now so definitely recommend that you check out James's video um, where you'll see a comparison between the gear that he's used and the gear that I've used he also takes better photographs than me so a big thank you to James for joining me on this one thanks for having me thanks for giving me all your knowledge well not all of it but some of it it's much needed so it's goodbye from me and it's goodbye from him <laughs>